This is Chris Ray on Point Counterpoint. You are listening to KUSD University of St. Thomas Campus Radio. So uh, right now, uh, Grayson is unable to be on the show today because, you know, stuff. And uh, I could say he's being a little bit of a bitch right now, but, you know. That's just the way it is. Is this working? Let me just check this right here. I want to make sure everything's working for you guys because I don't re-record podcasts. <laughs> Let me check. All right. I am going to pull this up here. I'm going to find out what is going on, if it's working. Let's see. Come on. Load, 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 load. Load, damn you. Load. Load. Come on. Let's see. Come on. Load, 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 load. Oh, it is working. Indeed, indeed. Yes. <laughs> so, hold on. All right, so I'm going to get the ball started right here with uh, some recent events. So I was watching an MMA fight on Friday and there there's going to be this big fight everyone was waiting for it and it was uh Matt Mitrione American versus Sergey Karnotov and uh the two guys were uh they're circling each other they just got in the ring 15 seconds later Mitrione the American <laughs> I'm just going to call him the American from now on now I'll call him Mitrione and uh he he goes to kick the inside of the thigh. Of course, Sergey moves a little bit. He moves to just the right spot where he is kicked directly in the groin area. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah, so, you know, and of course, I knew it was bad when I looked at it. I, I knew this was not going to be pretty. But... Um, what can I say, you know? I mean, though he went down fast. He was just sitting there. You could tell he's in pain. Doctor's trying to relieve some pressure from the area. Um, but, you know, he couldn't finish. It was 15 seconds into the frickin' game. He couldn't finish, but, you know, apparently they're going to try to do this again. They both agreed. And we'll see how it goes. And I don't know when. But there's another MMA fight on Saturday, is it? In Dublin. The last one was in Connecticut, I believe. The next one's in Dublin on Saturday. I think that'll be good. No, I don't really watch much MMA. I recently got kind of into a little bit. Normally not a huge fan. But... It's kind of fun to watch sometimes. You know, it's exciting. Uh, you get to see some good jujitsu. That's a f that's a fun one to watch. And of course, these guys are getting pounded. And th that's the thing uh, with the whole uh, the I'll, I'll call it the kick. <laughs> that's the thing with it is it's a rough game and things happen sometimes and it sucks that sometimes you get kicked in the nuts. But you know. That's just the, the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. It's, you agree to be in this game, and you know that there's a risk to it. There's a risk, as there is to everything, you know? So, yeah. I mean, what, what, what more is there to say there? But, you know, another, another show that's good, well, it's, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like MMA, but it's originally from the Armored Combat 
Combat League ACL. Uh, <laughs> I tore my ACL. But uh, it's uh, this new show on the History Channel called Night Fight. And you know, you can you dress up in full armor and you fight each other with weapons and you put a bunch of guys in a ring and they fight, at, fight it out. But there are a number of rules in there. So uh, there's, let's see if I can rem- name them off the top of my head. There's uh, blunt weapons only, no stabbing strikes, no striking of the feet, back, the knee, or groin. Uh, and you can't hit a man on the ground. I think that's the main ones, really. Maybe there's a few small rules that they don't even bother mentioning. Because they're just minor. And of course, it's a there's a, it's a bracket system. Eventually, there's going to be a finals of all the winners from the different fights. But then at the end of every episode... Well, they start out with a whole bunch of guys. They fight it down until eventually there's two... Until the, there's eventually there's four. Team... Two teams of two, and then each team is some historical country. Like, uh, it could be the Normans versus the Saxons. Saxons. Um, Scotland versus England, whatever. And they're going to use armor or weapons of the time. Sometimes they'll use Roman stuff. I've seen them. Greek. Really cool. But some guys get hit really hard, you know? In fact, there's this one axe that uh, they're going to use this one time. And that one of the judges came in and he goes, nope, nope, not right, not the way it is. Because the way that the axe was, it that thing would break fucking bones. So they had to uh, adjust it. make sh- Because even though it is a rough sport, you got to make sure that there are certain precautions you take. Just to to minimize the risk. But there's always going to be some risk. You just try to keep it at a minimum. Everything in moderation. But if you're interested... I'm just going to tangent on this kind of thing, aren't I? But if you're interested in Night Fight, you know... You might also be interested in Forge and Fire, which is instead of using the weapons, you're making the weapons. Is one kind of a creative way to think of it. But they bring in a bunch of forgers, a bunch of blacksmiths, and they'll start out, for example, like they'll start making just the blade of a knife. No refining, you don't sharpen it, just the basic shape and the basic knife. And then eventually they'll, they'll, uh, eliminate one of the people and then you'll take that knife and you'll polish it up, sharpen it, uh, put a handle on it, whatever. And there's going to be certain dimensions and goals you're supposed to meet within each challenge. And then after that, then you're going to, then it's going to have to undergo a series of tests and there's a whole bunch of them. Some of them are very brutal. Some of them are a little easier. You may have to have your knife pounded into like a cattle yoke, chop knife, chop ice, um, uh, cut through a pig, whatever. See, it's stabbing or slicing abilities on various substances. Cut a sandbag, cut different ropes. Uh... You know, and I've seen some blades just can't handle the stress of what they go under. And you see a blade snap every once in a while. Or some other uh, catastrophic failure happen to that blade. You know? It just happens like that. It's just the way it works out. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, uh, since the last episode, uh, RHA was giving away these free Comet Goldfish. That's the type of goldfish it is. Comet Goldfish. And I, I got mine, of course. N- named him Lenny Bruce. And so far, no one I've told knows who Lenny Bruce even is. They just... 
They just think it's a cool name, you know? Really? And I'm like, eh? You don't know about that comedian, Lenny Bruce, from the 60s and 70s? And, uh... I'll try to be brief with my description. I probably won't be brief, but maybe I will. <laughs> but, you know, he was a he was a very big influence on George Carlin's style and uh, died of a drug overdose. But uh, he was arrested for obscenity. He was arrested in San Fran for using... I'm not sure if I should use it here. Uh I'll give you an idea of what it is. Um, let's say a name for a male roost for a male chicken, and then what you do to a lollipop. There. That's that. That's what he got arrested for. And then he also got arrested, I believe, in Chicago for saying schmuck, which is a Yiddish term for penis. And, you know, schmuck isn't even really a bad word. It's a slightly coarse, rough word, but it, it's, it's not even a, it's, it's not even swear, swearing. It's just a, dare I say, slang? Really? It's just, there's not much bad in that. You got, you got freaking arrested for that. I think it's insane. And of course, this had a major influence on George Carlin, who created a list of the seven words you cannot say on TV. One of those was the first one I mentioned. So shit, piss. Uh, I'm not gonna say all of them. See you, word. Fuck. And the first one I said. Uh, mofo. I'm just gonna say that. Tits. Yeah. That was that was George Carlin's doing. But you know, he uh, Lenny Bruce became an inspiration for a lot of different comedians, including George Carlin. And so, and so so is my fish. He's gonna inspire a lot of people with his foul mouth. <laughs> I'd spare a lot of fish. That reminds me of, with the fish, reminds me of a dream I had. Crazy dream last night. Insane. Made no sense at all. And I can't make heads nor tails of it. So, just to give you a little context here. So, it's ba it's it's basically Minnesota, I guess. This, this, uh, dream. But, I was in a little pond a rather large pond, I guess, suppose. Um, in the middle of the pond, there was like this building sticking out of it. It was like basically a church, and then there's a bunch of steps out in front of it, a little area to stand. But the funny thing about this is this church, this building, and the steps in front of it, completely made out of cantaloupe. No one is eating it. It was just made out of cantaloupe. I don't know. And I was fishing in this pond, and I caught a koi. And this wasn't just a regular koi fish. This was a bloody 60-pound koi. Oh, I don't know if it was four feet long, but it was thick and it was wide. And uh, this was a gigantic fish. And eventually uh, I kind of tossed the rod aside and I just grabbed his tail and hauled him on onto the cantaloupe church, onto the steps, and I set him there. And I was with a fishing guy at the time in this dream. And the, the guy took him and he's like, well, these koi are an invasive species here, so uh, we, we can't release them. So uh, we gutted them to keep for food. 
cut them open, you know, cleaned them out. And then that's the end of the dream. I don't know what it means. I can't answer that question. There's no logical explanation for what I was thinking at the time. You know? There really, there really is. Yeah. Goldfish and koi are crazy fish. You know, the, I mean, first of all, they're not dumb like people say. They don't have like a five second memory. They, they can actually remember quite well. They can remember faces. They can, they've been taught to distinguish between blues and classical music. Um, what else? They can do different tricks that you that you give them. They can they, they can remember this for a year, more. I don't know, at least a year. First I heard six months, and then they must have changed that to a year. They're actually quite intelligent little creatures, you know. Uh, I was going somewhere with this. I was going somewhere with this. Maybe I wasn't. Um, but you know, I wonder if that 60-pound koi I caught, I wonder if it has something to do with the tarpon I caught, which is about 5 feet long and 55, 60 pounds. Coincidence? Maybe it is. Coincidences are statistically probable. A truly remarkable day is one where no coincidences occur at all. And that's from Neil deGrasse Tyson. So you know it's true. Or I paraphrase just a little bit. I think he didn't say probable, he said common. You know, I, I it means the same thing. But, uh, you know, I'm not sure what STAR or RHA events are going on Recently, I mean, there's a couple. There's it's the it's the week of bingo. There's like three different times when they're playing bingo. What? Two of them come from the same organization. And one is the other. Yeah. What the hell? You know. You know. You know what I'm talking about. Do you know that? <laughs> So, time for a little news. Uh, well, Belarus has announced that it's it's a uh, I don't want to say it once it's open to uh, reuniting with Russia, and you know this just I smell a rat. And no, I don't mean that there is some sort of dead furry rodent, mammalian rodent in here. Well, I guess all rodents are mammals. But, I mean, there's something fishy going on. And I'm not talking about my goldfish, Lenny Bruce. <laughs> I'm talking about some sort of meddling in Belarusian affairs. And I'm concerned. I am concerned. You know, because Russia has a very interesting history. It's very interesting. They don't really have really any leaders that I could consider truly remarkable. True, And by remarkable, I mean like good by the generally accepted standards. I mean, they just have one tyrant after another. The czars. I mean, occasionally you had one czar that's maybe not so bad. Occasionally. I mean, technically... <laughs> technically, uh, uh... Catherine the Great was considered a... What was the term? Wasn't Was it enlightened absolute monarch? That doesn't sound quite right. I don't know, but she was pretty ruthless... I mean, 
But as far as what Russia benefited from her, she did do some things where she expanded the country. She's the one that expanded out to Siberia. So now it's not just a European country, it's an Asian country. And so no one is really knows. I guess if you had to choose, I would say it's a European country for sure. But there's still a, the Asian half of it. And then there's Peter the Great, of course. Uh, he was pretty brutal as well. He's the one that helped their navy out a lot. But um, there's Ivan the Terrible. Self-explanatory. Nicholas II. Um, not as bad as some of the others. He was probably not a great leader. And I'm not I'm not supporting him at all. But you know, and then of course the, you have Joseph Stalin killed the second most people of all tyrants in the world. Up there with Adolf Hitler and Mao Zedong. Almost the top three. But then it I mean Mikhail Gorbachev not as bad as some others, you know. He he he's part of the reason why the Cold War ended. I don't want to say he's the only reason, but Perestroika, he was starting to uh initiate some capitalist ventures in there. He was he was in a Pizza Hut ad, wasn't he? Or was I don't think that was a look alike. I'm pretty sure that was him. But, you know, my favorite part about him, he's got a birthmark on his forehead in the shape of Southeast Asia. He, I'm, pretty sh I'm pretty sure he was meant to be born there, but he was born in Russia by mistake. He was an accidental baby. <laughs> his, his, his mama and daddy didn't use protection. Now, of course, you got Vladimir Putin. Ultra, ultra macho. Over the top. Just dickhead. Never trusted him. It's one of those countries where, like, you almost want to trust him because the Cold War is over. You really can't because you know what they do. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird, weird, weird country. Yeah, but are there really any great leaders for Russia? Um... What's this? That's nothing. Oh, what is this? Um, as you can see, people, um, I'm not used to doing this show on my own, but I think I'm doing a pretty good job, you know. You know? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? But uh, enough of enough of talking about Russia. Russia, it's interesting to talk about for a while, and then you have to just leave because it's just it depresses you. It's just a cold, little bitter country. As I like to say, it's kind of the the little brother of Europe. Like it's trying desperately to be up with the big boys in the other countries in Europe, particularly you know like Germany. Britain, France. N n p pick a country in Europe, and but like, it's not. It's European enough that it can try to be European, but it's not quite European enough that it's really fully accepted. So maybe that's creating some sort of bitterness. <laughs> So 
some sort of hatred and just wants to conquer Belarus, Ukraine, whatever. Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. No? Yeah, no. Over to Britain now. Um, so, Brexit. Let's go on with that, Grayson. Oh, that's right. You're not here. Ha, 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 ha. But uh, Brexit's one of those things. You just, the more you read up on it, the less you know. You're like, okay, I think I understand this pretty well. You start researching a little bit. You're reading and you're like, oh, I don't know this. Uh, what, do, what do I do? Just, you know. And there are reasons to stay and reasons to leave. I was talking to this one British guy one time. This, and this guy voted to uh, leave. And his reasoning was because he remembers back when uh, the UK originally joined the EU, and it was it was to be it was as a economic for economic reasons for uh, you know no tariffs between member states. And yeah, the EU is a good thing, um, but then. When, then all of a sudden, all these things that the people that the people Britain didn't vote for came into came into place, and they started uh, this unelected uh, bureaucracy of in the EU Parliament started imposing things upon all the all the countries there. So, if, and then there's another there's this one Scottish shepherd I was talking to, and he. Um, of course he's a shepherd, so he takes care of sheep. And, uh, normally what happens is when a lamb dies, the, the eagles can come in and, and feed on them. And then that, that keeps the eagles happy. It, it cleans up, uh, it cleans up the waste, you know? So, so everyone, everyone's happy. There's, there's dead sheep, so that's not good, but you know, it's cleaned up now. The eagles are happy. But now what what you're you're supposed to do is you're supposed to and this is costing money to the shepherd. You're supposed to take the dead sheep, put them on a train and ship them down to I believe Birmingham is it? It's somewhere down in England. And it's supposed to be disposed of there. Of course the problem with this is now there's nothing for the eagles to eat and they have to eat something, obviously. So what do they eat? They wait for the baby lambs to be born. They'll go over there. They'll and they'll they'll pick up the lambs. They'll uh, gouge their eyes out, eat those. That's not fun. That's the way it is, though. But you know, there's I've talked to anti-Brexit people, and they completely understand their point of view. You know. If it wasn't for some of these regulations, I'd be I'd be pro staying too. I think it's at least in concept a good thing. I agree with some of it. Um particularly the the uh, no tariffs. Uh I think it's nice to be able to cross into from like France to Germany, for example, without a passport. I mean, no. Well, I do think it is nice to be able to do that. Um, it's not like it's that much of an inconvenience to have to take out your passport, like going from Northern Ireland to Ireland, as you'll have to do after Brexit is completed. Thing is, um, a lot of the British people are unhappy with the way Theresa May has been handling the problem, because. I mean, she's being kind of making a mess of it. She, you know, she, no one really knows what, what to do. There's so many little things, so many, the EU has made it so complicated to get out of it. 
and you you really have to follow the protocol or else you're going to be punished or going to put sanctions on you. And this kind of makes an example for other European countries that want to leave because I know Italy is another one that might might want to leave. But you know, and I'm noticing that uh Theresa May's uh Tory go- government is starting to get less and less approval. And I think I'm going to predict by, that by the next general election in the UK, there's going to be a Labour government. Still going to go through with Brexit, I'm sure. Like I, I heard Jeremy Corbyn talking to the Northern Irish that uh, despite him being personally against Brexit, he's going to continue the momentum, maybe with a little more of his twist on it, but it's still he's still going to continue with leaving the European Union. Nope. Um, all right. So let's see. I covered Russia. I covered the MMA. I covered a couple things, a couple, uh, you know, a couple of TV shows and the MMA and Let's see what's what's going on today. You know there was a there was an activities fair today. You know you get to see what clubs are going on, what all the the hip new kids are going to, and um, there's some cool stuff. You know I got clubbed out pretty early though. Lifting club. Um, I somehow got sucked into neuroscience club. <laughs> I don't know if I could put my name down, but they like just hand out the bill. They just handed me the paper with, you know, times and dates and stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, that sounds cool. I'm a psychology major, but it's close. You know, I like neuroscience. I mean, I'm more of a psychology person, but I think. Neuroscience is cool. It's very important. Completely support it. No. Um, and I'm working on a psychological study and research methods in psychology. We're studying the effects of like virtual reality on perception or uh, our perception in the virtual reality. We still got to refine the experiment a little more, but You know, back to Britain, I, w- I remember what I was going to say. There's so- I was going to say something about Britain. I forgot what it was. But um, and it kind of connects back with the neuroscience, sort of. Because, you know, Dr. Sam Harris, he's a neuroscientist. And he knows this guy over in Britain, Majid Nawaz. He's an author, radio show host. Um, he-, he produced a documentary with Sam Harris last year. And he was recently beat up, this Majid Nawaz, by some uh, assholes over there. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to, I don't want to go into too much detail on this. If you want to, if you want to look it up, just look up Majid Nawaz, either his Twitter or his Instagram. That's M A A J I D N A W A Z. You know, I'm not going to explain this. I mean, I realize I've I've been explaining everything else, but there's something that I don't know. I just don't feel like that one. So. No, uh, oh, look, there's no one listening live because everyone watches this podcast after it's been released. Ha ha. You know, I've been, I've been considering starting a second podcast, but I'm not sure if it's a good idea. It's kind of a, 
it's kind of a big move, especially with the idea I had. Um, not that it's going to take up a whole lot of extra time, really. But, you know, I'm going to need probably multiple people. I mean, I could do all the voices myself on this. But it would be hard. And then also, in order to get the right people, I'd have to... Oh, God. I don't even... I don't know how easy that would be, finding just the right people for this. The, right, the people with the right voices. They'd have to know what it is. I'm not going to explain my idea because I don't want to let anyone steal it. I don't want to get anyone's hopes up. I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. I'm, I'll, just, I'll say this. It's pure comedy. This is just more of a talk show kind of com- comedic. This one, other one is pure comedy. It's sort of like the new Ron Burgundy podcast, which is hilarious. Despite some of the negative reviews I've read of it. But it, I, I listened to it. It's really awesome. Podcasting is just an amazing thing, amazing tool to get ideas out there, amateur content. That's the whole premise behind podcasting. You know, and that's, it's a product of the internet, you know. Before, if you wanted to have a show, you'd have to be a professional. You'd have to have a TV show, a radio show, like like this. But probably be more with more with a actual radio station. Now, if you got a just a phone, you can record it and just put it anywhere, on Anchor, our sponsor and our podcasting hosting site, on YouTube, where I also put some of where I also put my podcast. But you know. Uh, and that kind of brings me back to Wayne's World, kind of, because that was like a cable access show back in the 90s. I mean, according to the movies, of course, this is all fiction, but it was meant to be a cable access show <laughs> run by from his basement. And uh, it's amateur content, of course. And that's the kind of thing that people would do on the Internet eventually, just a few years later. You know, not not much later at all from Wayne's World. <laughs> you know, people just, they get this idea. It's very amateurish, but hey, people like it. They'll listen to it. And good show. I just think it's such an amazing, such an amazing tool. I think. And that's all I have to say about that. Right? So, what's been going on with me? What has been going on with the moi? That sounded incredibly egotistical. The moi. <laughs> oh, not much. Yeah. You know, next week there's a swing dance going to 301. So that'll be cool. Yes, swing dance is going fine. I'm a, quite the swinger and a dancer. So, ladies, if you're listening to this, You heard me. Hit me up. Hit me, baby, one more time. Oh, yeah. ASMR. Hey, it's me. ASMR. Chris. Today on Point to Counterpoint. I'm going. I can't.
can't wait to listen to that. <laughs> That's going to be fun. No, I'm not an ASMR artist. It's just creepy. You know? Just, I mean, it gives you that tingling sensation. It's weird. It's just, I've got to do a little research on that. I think that would be fascinating. ASMR. You know? Let's see here. Oh. Well, I'm going to go on a random topic here, as I've been doing for a lot of this show. Uh, I got the random question that I was, supposed, I was asked earlier today to ask someone else. How was the Queen of England doing? And, of course, they responded with, uh, she's still kicking. So then I got the interesting response from someone that uh, it's probably because she's been doing cocaine all these years and that kept her alive. <laughs> or some sort of hallucinogenic substance. She's been tripping and she thinks she's the queen. <laughs> And what a what an interesting uh, conspiracy. She gives me the funny picture of her shooting up heroin and then sh chasing a little purple dragon. <laughs> oh boy, I watch too much South Park. No, I don't. I watch it sometimes. Funny show. Wow. This show is really winding down. I probably shouldn't go too much longer I'm, or I'm going to start getting into really weird subjects. I'm going to be getting crazy. <laughs> That's right. Oh, this show is gets an interesting twist when there's only one person. It's no longer point counterpoint. It's just point. I know some people would argue with me and say that it's actually just counterpoint. That's impossible because a counterpoint is unable to exist without first having a point. A point. Counterpoint. And that's how the show works. Theoretically. God, I'm not sure. I think I can. I think I can ramble on for a few more minutes. This is this is gonna be such a fun episode. I hope the audio sounds better than than last week's. Last week's had some problems. I'll just say that. You know, but sometimes that happens. That's the way things go sometimes. We have these little technical difficulties. I don't think I'm going to have that problem, but I don't know. I don't know. I do not know. Wow, I've almost rambled for 45 minutes. That's that's probably a new record. <laughs> Just bullshitted my way through. I don't know, I talked about some interesting stuff. You know, I thought it was a good show. Maybe not quite family friendly. But you know, sometimes better shows aren't PG. That's the way it is. Like a Curb Your Enthusiasm wouldn't be the same show if there was no cursing. And the same with South Park. The same with a lot of shows. Movies, TV shows. Podcasts, the Joe Rogan experience. Sometimes you just need that realness. 
What the? Here we go. Okay, yeah. You just need that realness. It just feels real. Where instead of trying to arbitrarily keep it clean, but also fake, you, you just talk. Say whatever comes out. And that's natural. It's real. I'm having a conversation with you, my listener. Right there on your smart device. I sound like an old person now. Your smart device is now. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, what's this? See? Do I have a listener? Do I? Oh, no, let me see. Uh, I might. Do I? Nope. Not currently. Not live. You know, it's kind of... It's kind of hard to get viewers on Mixler. Because it's not like actual uh, traditional radio. Where you can just turn your car on, go to some channel. You have to go... You have to manually go to this extra to this special website look up KUST and then find it it's yeah but you know it's cool it's cool it's cool it's the way it goes but I should probably start winding down now I'm starting to lose it. My mind is starting to go crazy. Crazier than I normally am. I mean, I normally am quite the cray-cray dude. But, whatever. 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 I do what I want. Quote attributed to Eric Cartman. (laughs) I think. Should I wait three more minutes? Or should... Oh, two more minutes maybe? Maybe I want to get up to that sweet spot up there. I think I want to hit 50 minutes. (laughs) That's that's the goal. (laughs) You know, uh, so I'll just give one last word to my sponsor, Anchor. Anchor's a great place, and you've probably seen the ad at the start of the video, unless you're watching on YouTube. Uh... Which means the ad's going to have all the information in much greater detail than what I'm seeing right now. But, great place to host, great place to find podcasts as well. Pocket Cast doesn't sponsor us anymore because the the sponsorship expired for a couple months. It's during November, end of November, went to the end of January. But, uh, This has been Chris Wright and not Grayson (laughs) because he's not here right now. On Point Counterpoint, you are listening to KUST, University of St. Thomas Campus Radio. It's been Let Fam. I'm going to go now. You have a good evening, folks. I hope that your day is as pleasant and fun as my own because that is magical. That's where the magic begins. Remember, spend time with friends and family and those you love. Tell those you love how you feel about them, not just your actual related, not just your relatives, but also your significant others, your crushes. Tell them how you feel, and I guarantee you're going to be happy here on Lake Wobegon. <laughs> Namaste.